Hey, it's Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio, welcoming you to another edition of People of Distinction, the talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. Run to our website, peopleofdistinction.org, for more info, or you can email me directly at benji at alcoholenterprises.com. And on the line with us today, we have Pastor C. Horace Kitson. We'll be discussing his book, Is the Bible Really True?, available at Amazon and Barnes & Noble. And I will say, Bishop was brought to people of distinction today, listen, by some of the best movers in the business, Parchment Global Publishing. If you have a book that you'd like moved, well, you gotta move it through Parchment. You can find them at parchmentglobalpublishing.com. And guys, I am beyond excited to have Bishop here on the line with us, okay? Now, listen, the the name on the book is Pastor, okay? But he's upgraded since then. He's become a bishop. So I'm going to address him as Bishop. He's worked hard for that title, so we definitely want to give him the appreciation. Now, listen, the book we're going to be discussing today, Is the Bible Really True? Right off the bat, just from the title, we understand what it's going to entail. And the question that, I don't know about you guys, but I've definitely questioned multiple times in my life, right? A lot of times we hear the stories of the Bible and we read the Bible and, you know, it's it's tough because we're asked to just believe it upon faith, but is it really true? Who knows, right? And I think the greatest person that we could have here on the line to shed some light on that question is the bishop himself, right? So we're very, very lucky to have him here on the line. He's going to be the expert on the topic. He's going to be able to articulate all the nuances in the book much better than I can ever do. So without further ado, let's bring him here with us. Bishop, first and foremost, thank you so much for being a guest with us today on People of Distinction. How are you? It's my pleasure. Fantastic. Well, listen, the pleasure is all ours, okay? We're very much looking forward to this. I'd love to to have some information to really shed some light on this age-old question. Now, before we jump into mm-hmm. your book, Bishop, let's hold off slightly. Tell our listening audience a little bit about yourself. Okay. I am originally from Jamaica, the fourth child of Bishop Eric Kitson and Emily Kitson. I was raised in a Christian home, but after going into high school, middle school, I drifted and I went after the things of the world. But our father met with us and he spoke from his heart to us. And that discussion transformed all of us. Mm-hmm. All seven children have our personal experience with the Lord. So at 18, after leaving high school, I had a personal and dynamic experience with Jesus Christ. And that has brought about what I will share with you today. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for sharing. Now, let's jump right in. Let's not wait any longer. Is the Bible really true? Tell us about your book. Is it really true? Is it really true? Oh, something I didn't mention that I need to mention. Um, I've been married for 44 years to one lady, wonderful lady. And we have two wonderful girls that are working in the ministry. They're both teachers. And we have six grandchildren there you have so that's it. my whole life there <laughs> <laughs> well thank you very much for sharing man appreciate that it sounds like a beautiful <laughs> family you're a lucky man now tell us a little I'm bit about you, your brother. book okay just before i tell you about the book i was at college i, I was very good at physics and it was in jamaica and this lecturer he was a white gentleman from america and two of us got a hundred percent. And in Jamaica, when you get a hundred, you know what I mean? You are bright, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and we got a hundred. No, I was the president of the InterVarsity Christian 
fellowship on campus. And he looked at me and he said, we call one another Mr. Even on campus. He said, Mr. Kitson, you are a Christian and you are doing physics because in his mind, physics was against God. But in truth and in fact, all the laws of physics were made and put in place by the most high. So I was able to explain that to him and to let him know that science does not oppose God. It just verified the marvelous doings of our God. So from that point, this thing has been in my heart. Is the Bible really true? I'm going to read something from the book here. In the, I think it was in the introduction. It says, what makes something true? One may ask. According to Robin Lane, Robin Lane Fox, the historian, he said, true two pillars are one, coherence within the story and the correspondence with facts outside. So the Bible is not true just because people are saying it's true. But just like physics, you do the theory in the classroom and you go in the laboratory and you do the experiment. Ah, uh, yes, that demonstrates the truth and the law of what we studied in class. Mm -hmm. So can we actually demonstrate and prove what the Bible is saying? That's the way I am approaching it. Thank you very much for sharing, Bishop. Now, next question, as we move on, listen, uh, let's talk, let's go into inspiration. Okay. Now, yes. What inspired, now a multi-part question, of course, because inspiration can take multiple forms. A, what yeah. inspired this particular narrative? But B, I mean, listen, you come from a background of, of being in the church. What inspired mm -hmm. you to transition to this creative background and become a writer? I am actually a commissioned or professional land surveyor licensed in Jamaica and we observe stars, we observe the sun when we do astronomy, and this particular friend of mine, in our final year, we were doing a major project, and he could not come to school to finish the project. And we needed to finish the project. So we're talking about inspiration now. So one Saturday morning, people say, something told me, but I say, the Spirit of God told me I was living on campus to go to a lecturer who teaches us. He lives in a dorm or where the lecturers live. And I was to ask him to take me over to my friend's house. And I was to pray for my friend and heal him. Jesus said, heal the sick. So I so I went down stairs to ask my lecturer if he could take me to my friend's house. Only to find out when I reached the door and I was about to knock the door, the lecturer said, oh, I was coming to your room to ask you if we could visit the gentleman who was sick. Huh? The spirit asked me to go and ask him to take me to pray for my friend. And the man wasn't a Christian, mm -hmm. <laughs> but he was led, whether by an unch, they call it, or whatever, 
to come and get me. And I was at his door. So we went over to my friend's house. He was in bed and he was sick. His girlfriend, he got married for 44 years, just like me. His girlfriend was there. He lived with his grandmother. So in the room, it was one, two, three, four, four of us. And I said, if you don't believe that this man will be made whole, please leave the room. So his wife went outside and, and we were praying. And I said, okay, Lord, take my hand. Here's my friend. He's sick. And you said in your words, I should lay my hands on the sick and they will recover. So uh, I put my hand on his stomach. And I say, Jesus said we should speak to these things, speak to these mountains, speak to these situations, inspiration. So I put my hand on my friend's stomach and I say, uh, I speak to this virus. He has been to doctors, specialists. They couldn't help him. I say in the name, oh my Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua. Be healed, be made whole from this very moment. We left him, he got up, he went fishing the same Saturday evening. He was at school Monday morning to everybody's surprise, completely healed. So then, is the Bible true? Yes or no? <laughs> I took the theory into my friend's room. I was talking to him. He's in Toronto. We have been friends for years. I was talking to him the other day. He said to me, Brother Kitto, do you remember the miracle? Excuse you. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even know the background to the miracle. So, Things like these, I'm telling you, they are inspirational. And I could tell you about my grandson. He could tell you what the Lord did for him. I mean, we have proven the truth of the Bible. So I'm inspired and I'm almost feeling it here, brother, in my studio. Why is Brother Benji? Fantastic. You know, Bishop, this is what an incredible story. I, I mean, listen, it, it's hard to deny the truth when you tell a story mm. like that. I mean, that is incredible. Such powerful stuff. Guys, again, mm -hmm. here on the line with Pastor C. Horace Kitson. We're discussing his book, Is the Bible Really True? Available at Amazon and Barnes & Noble. Bishop, this is all absolutely incredible. Now, following off of that, you know, in addition, because listen, the story that you just gave, I'm sure plays into this question already. But in addition to that, what is your personal experience pertaining to the truth of the Bible? Mm. Oh, my brother. I have my grandson. I have my own daughter. Let me tell the story about my daughter. She went to the University of Central Florida, bright girl. She was in the inter-baccalaureate program. And uh, they, you know, she became a part of a sorority, Alpha Beta Kappa, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And they took her to Gainesville, another city, to initiate her. Now, we have to be careful of some of these things, but that's for another time. Absolutely. She came back from the initiation sick, dying. My wife took her to the doctor. She vomited for 21 days straight. Wow. My wife took her to the doctor. The doctor cannot do anything. He sent her to the specialist. The specialist said he could not do anything. Now, when that happens in Jamaica and some of these islands, you have to go to the witchcraft man. Are you comprehending me there? Absolutely. Yes, because this is serious. One lady from the church said to me, Pastor, you need to put a scissors under her pillow or you have to go and see this man. Okay. 
my wife said this Sunday morning, I cannot go to church and sing. In the name of Jesus, we have the victory because we are not having the victory. Wherever mm-hmm. my daughter, she was 19, 20 at the time, whenever she goes somewhere, she has to take a vomiting pail. So she took a vomiting pail to church this Sunday morning. We came home this Sunday evening. She was ready to humble herself. And she said to me, Dad, carest thou not that I perish? She was dying right in front of our eyes. She lost 25 pounds and she was dying. Oh, man. That Sunday night, we went into her room and we are going to do exactly what the Spirit said. We told that Spirit. We spoke to the Spirit, just like Jesus did. And say, you lying, wicked, destructive, fraternal Spirit. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, take your hands off my daughter and have no more authority in her body. So Jesus said, I must speak to the thing. I said, my daughter, in the name of Jesus, be made whole. Be healed right now. The next morning, my dear sir, she went to school. Her friend did not believe that she could go by herself. Her friend went with her. And from that day until now, 15, 16 years ago, she has not vomited since completely healed. (laughs) Bishop, my goodness, this is absolutely astounding. You know, oh my God. Listen, the only question I could ask from that is why isn't a book like this more comprehensive? <laughs> you know, when, when you go to college, the books are so thick, sometimes they scare you. Mm-hmm. The physics book by Sears and Zemansky, I mean, 600 pages. You, you're almost afraid of the books. <laughs> so I wanted to write a book that had inspiration, information that a parent could give to a child and say, read this concerning the Bible. As a matter of fact, I wrote it so that my children and grandchildren, oh my Lord, here they come. (laughs) The children and the grandchildren could build their lives on the Bible. That's why I wrote it. And that others, that parents could hand it to a child and say, read this. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you the inspiration, the facts, the truth. Jesus said, when you know it, the truth will make you free. So the book is not threatening. I, I met this lady who went to college together. And she have her son, and she's wondering. She bought the book. I said, take this, give it to him, and let him read it. It's non-threatening. I didn't get the result from her, but she bought the book, and she gave it to her son. So the book is non-threatening, while at the same time, it is very deep, but not too lengthy. So that's why it is this size. There you go. There you oh, have brother it. Benji, go ahead, man. I'm crying to help, brother. <laughs> Bishop, Bishop, this has been absolutely incredible, man. I am, I'm so, so oh glad that we had you here on the show. Listen, last question that I'd love to take us out on, because everything has been. Mm-hmm. It, I, I don't even want to touch it. It's all been fantastic. The last question, from my own curiosity, what would you say was a highlight for you in writing this book? Or if not a highlight, <laughs> I don't know, maybe something that surprised you that you weren't expecting oh, prior to embarking upon this journey. As I went on this journey and got deeper, you know, at seminary you do certain things. And as I researched and I look at the prophecy of the four world kingdoms, Historically, in other words, the Bible is true historically. Mm-hmm. It is true prophetically. As a matter of fact, the only book where 
the writer's beard to prophesy and say things about the future was the Bible. Because if you try to predict things and it doesn't, and they don't come to pass, you are a liar. Mm -hmm. You are not a prophet. But these men, under the inspiration of the Spirit of God, they prophesied things and they came to pass. And one of the greatest prophecies was when Nebuchadnezzar, this guy from Babylon, which is now modern-day Iraq, mm -hmm. he had a dream and he couldn't interpret the dream. So there were some Jewish boys that were interning in the palace and somebody said, oh, king, these guys know the king was going to kill all the sorcerers and all the Chaldeans, the scientists, because nobody could recall the dream that he had forgotten and give the interpretation. But Daniel and his three friends, they prayed and they said, oh, God, you know the end from the beginning. It was God who gave the man the dream and God revealed it to Daniel and his friends. And they went to the king, and he didn't have to kill and behead anybody because he remembered the dream. And just in a quick minute, the dream talked about four world powers that would dominate the Jewish people. Number one was Babylon. And after Babylon, that was the head of gold. Then you had the chest of silver, and that was Babylon. Then you had Medo Persia, modern day Iran. Then you had the Greeks, very powerful people. And after the Greeks came the Romans. These four world powers have dominated the Jews. And then you had ten toes, which is now the European Union trying to come together to become a world power. But God said, iron and clay cannot mix together. So these modern-day people who are trying to come together to put together the new world order and all of these things. Mm -hmm. They have too much internal problems. And God said they would not be able to come together because the iron and clay cannot come together. So this has definitely, as a matter of fact, I just preached a series on it when COVID came and we went into it. And this has been very inspirational. So right now we are getting ready to go into the time of the Ten Tobes, the New World Order, when they are going to come against the Most High and they want to prevent Jesus from coming back to rule and to reign. Brother, let me stop because this is too deep, man. <laughs> well, listen. Oh, my Lord. Thank my you. Lord. So, guys, listen, what more can be said? All right, you know what you got to do. You got to get on over to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, pick up your copy of Is the Bible Really True? by Pastor C. Horace Kitson. And listen, that's not all, okay? That's the main focus of today's interview. That's really where we wanted to stay. But guys, listen, he has two other books that are still in the creation, so you can't pick them up just yet, but be on the lookout for it, okay? He has one called yes. A Better Covenant, and then the second one is yes. called The Power of Self-Interest, The Key to Motivation. Mm. As I stated, both Hallelujah. are still in creation. Be on the lookout for it because they'll be out very, very shortly. While you're at it, also visit his church's website. That's going to be hoporlando.org. So H-O-P-P-O-R-L-A-N-D-O.org. That's the church's website. You'll be able to find more information on Bishop himself as well as all of the events that the church has going on. Bishop, this has been an absolute yes. pleasure. Thank you so much for being a oh, guest with us today on you, People brother. of Distinction. It was my pleasure indeed. Lord bless you and thank you very much. <laughs>